the western shores of Lake Altai where the iron rich mountains of the rusty waste meets the lukewarm waters lays the ancient seat of House Gondar. For as long as history can remember, House Gondar has been an important ally for the crown of Argus, supporting the kingdom with iron of the highest class. Due to this relationship, the families have forged strong bonds through marriage. But maintaining this close relationship with the crown has not always been simple. The ruin of Castle Chatil on the nearby island is a brutal reminder of this. Throughout the years, the castle has been rebuilt over and over and has slowly evolved into this paradise on earth. A palace in the skies. Welcome to Darvasa. Hey guys, Viggo Man here and welcome back to another video. Today we are here with a new project as I teased in the previous video from Osram. I'm taking a little break just to get my inspirational juices flowing again, you know. Uh, and I've decided to move over to the Kingdom of Argus. And as you got in a little lore drop in the beginning there, this is Castle Darvasa. An important location in the Kingdom of Argus. And I gotta say... It's looking pretty awesome. The castle is built on this rock here on the shores of Lake Altai and is built in a Mediterranean inspired style but of course with my own Vigoman fantasy twist and I'm loving this design so much. I tried to go overboard with the details make it look really lush, wealthy and I even decided to add a lot of vegetation. Maybe too much to be honest but we have trees growing on a different plateaus here I decided to add this uh, over the top ornate spires all over the castle here and honestly I think it works the castle itself is very naturally defended with this uh, steep mountain walls where the castle is built on top and then we have this natural crevice uh, kind of separating this rock bit from the rest of the mountains here. So as you can see there's like this small natural uh, separation here and then we have a drawbridge. And on this side here I'm eventually gonna expand the castle with a small addition for um, like defending it and then uh, also gonna have like blacksmiths and more of the professional things that you need to run a castle that you don't want to have in your own home. So that's gonna be outside here and then we're gonna make a road kind of wind through these steep mountains all the way down to the shores where we're probably gonna have some docking facilities for boats and then I don't know maybe some some roads going off from here. The castle itself uh, is built around a small um, yard in the middle here and I tried to uh, again just go over the top with the details or not yeah details or to make it look super ornate so we have this uh, yard in the middle and it's just lovely it's so peaceful in here uh, I think it's a really cool place and then we have all sorts of different layers inside here so uh, when you first come in we have like a small layer where we have some doors taking you kind of into the lower sections we can move up we have more stuff happening and then we have another layer happening over here and I think it's just a cool way of uh, creating some um, interest in the, the yard itself. Now let's check out what we have built. So the first building we're going to check out here, the first part is the gatehouse and this is the only gatehouse so far uh, but as told you there's going to be more defense in front of it here. It's a pretty beefy looking uh, gatehouse in my opinion. We have the drawbridge and then we have this extension on the top where we have crenellations and uh, matriculations here. And then up above here we have an even bigger place to defend. So I think it's looking really cool. Uh, it's inspired by the castle of Sirmione in Lake Garda in Italy. And uh, I think I pulled it off quite well. And we have a little icon here of uh, one of the lords of Gandar in one of the uh, possibly uh, bloody wars. Or 
yeah, uh, conflicts that's been uh, evolving, having like keeping the relationship with the crown here. I don't know, some kind of important battle with the lord here. Just kind of uh, creating some fear in the enemies coming towards the gate here if they ever get this far. And then we go through here and there's some arrow slits on the side here so they can be shot at. And then some gates we could close it off here. And then you come into this yard that I already showed you. Uh, loving this little uh, patio thingy here. Uh, porch area I guess. Which is like extended over. And, and yeah I think it's really cool. From here uh, we can get into... This area where we have the arrow slits to, to fight and then take us all the way up to the um, the mechanical parts of the, the gatehouse. So we have this uh, the drawbridge mechanics here so you kind of pull this and this turns some wheels and cogs and then it uh, pulls itself up. I think, I, I've spent a lot of time on this, I think it should work but I don't know. Um, yeah, and then just some storage and then you can go all the way up here uh, where we have some areas for the guards to stay and they can then exit out here to this top bit where we have the matriculations looking straight down at the drawbridge but also on the crevice in between here. From here we can just continue up with another staircase or actually yeah, there's a little balcony here taking you out here just so they could look over this place and probably share messages with the Lord. If that's uh, necessary, they could have, yeah, come out here. It's just a peaceful little place to, to stay. And then we have the, yeah, the staircase taking us up to this bit here where we have the vaulted ceiling supporting the heavy stone floor of the upper level. So it's kind of tricky getting up here, but it works. And then up here we have a flagpole just, uh, indicating the, the flag of Gandar. And then, uh, yeah, the defense here, up here, we have uh, arrows just preparing in case someone ever tries to invade this place. The second building is this one here, which is adjacent to the gatehouse itself, uh, with these lovely ornate windows here. I love the arches and the way it's decorated, uh, and also down here as well, with some flowers hanging and all that sort of stuff. Uh, from the other side here... Yeah, it looks also pretty cool. We have these arches here, kind of supporting it a little bit. Just creating some depth into the building itself. Um, and then this very typical uh, Mediterranean architecture. And I think it works. I think it ties it all together here. So uh, with this, we can go down around here. And then below here, there's a couple of storage areas. So if we go in here, we have uh, just a general storage. So there's all sorts of stuff. There's some weapons tools, um, whatever you might need, a nice big vaulted ceiling that looks super cool. Uh, and then next to that we have another storage area. This is more of a pantry, so we have like grain stored in here, we have uh, uh, vegetables, um, yeah, and all sorts of stuff, and again nice vaulted ceiling. Then from down here there's no way to get up there, so what we have to do is actually to cheat and we have to fly up and around the main tower uh, because the way to get it into the upper section of this is through this um, extension here, this little bell tower. And then we go through here and then we come into a small hangout area and this is a place for uh, the servants. So this is the servant part of this place. Uh, very well decorated room. I love this. I've been really trying to improve my interior building skills for this castle here and Honestly, I'm happy with it. I think uh, I've succeeded. Let me know down below what you think of the interiors of this castle here. Um, and go through here. We have a lot like a little hallway here. Uh, statues, uh, some armor and yeah. Just well decorated. And then big windows looking over. Or not actually windows, just openings. Um, it's a pretty warm climate here. So yeah. And then just overlooking the, um, the yard here. And then from here we can uh, continue up and then we get to this section here again loving the interiors in here um, and this is more like the the common rooms and then in here we have the bedrooms for the servants a couple of bunk beds on the other side of the castle we have these buildings here uh, where some of them are built on a diagonal angle and then we have this bigger building which contains 
the feast hall and the bedrooms for the kids of the castle. Below these are the entrances uh, or some of the entrances to the bigger network of uh, cellars and stuff which you can enter from either here or from here. But I'm going to show you that after I've showed you this, so just a little teaser for you guys. Alright, so over here we have uh, this room here, uh, or building, and then it's a small hallway taking you into the boudoir, uh, which is like the ladies' room, I guess, for sewing and and uh, doing lady things as it did in medieval ages. It's not really woke, but um, you know how it is back in the days, uh, don't blame me. Uh, so this is like their room, and then on the opposite side here, we have uh, an entrance to some of the battlements, so yeah, a part to defend the castle here, some arrow slits looking down here, looking down on the beach, it's pretty beautiful. And then we have this uh, weird like tight staircase, but this takes us up to where the maester would live. So we come up here, he has his own private uh, chambers up here, uh, quite cool, um, and then come in here, uh, yeah. It's quite cramped in here and built on diagonal. It's all you kind of can do with it, but it looks pretty awesome in my opinion. Now let's go back down here, run down the staircase and get back out and then check out this other building here, which I do love. So uh, on straight ahead in here, we have the feast hall. And again, uh, the interior is pretty well a detailed, uh, a little over the top perhaps, a big fireplace to heat this place up, a cool chandelier and then some cool uh, ceiling designs in here. And then some big windows to let the natural morning light in here. Uh, on this side here there's a staircase again, taking us down to the basement. I'm just teasing you a little bit again guys, we're going to check that out in just a little bit. So this is the feast hall here. Uh, then we can go out here again and uh, we have a staircase here just taking us up to uh, another hallway and this is where we get to the kids bedroom so straight ahead here we have another bedroom for one of the kids pretty fancy we have another room in here and then up above we have one of the bigger rooms uh, for uh, probably the air uh, I think so it's a little bit bigger a little bit more fancy even a private fireplace in here um, Quite cool and then also Nice sitting area just the absolute best view just looking out here And then you can get all the way up here to this uh, lookout tower So you can look over here over there. That's the island I talked about in the lore drop There's gonna be a ruined castle there just for the lore of it And we're gonna to try to connect it possibly with a broken bridge or something who knows uh, that's something for the future though Now what you all been waiting for the the cellars the basements of this No, I bet you won't really look forward to it, but let's check it out anyway I think it's a fun addition to this place. Uh, we'll go in here actually uh, so um, Yeah, just some small storage rooms in here, but it's all kind of connected in here So plenty of these small rooms all over the place and this is not technically underground uh, But it's like since it's uh, you don't really want to have windows on the first floors of a castle This is just kind of considered the basement and again. Yeah staircase up to the feast hall here uh, So what we have here is just like this uh, plenty of tunnels running all over the place um which is quite cool we have yeah storage then around here again we come out to the yard um, and then we can go down this staircase which takes us to the wine cellar so a pretty cool area around here but what i really want to show you kind of the the, the coolest part of the this network here is the cistern which um, we go around here and then we go down this staircase here we come down to the castle cistern which is kind of carved out of the mountain below the center of the castle and this will collect up all the rainwater it's a pretty dry place so collecting everything you can is important and keeping it deep underground would kind of prevent it from um, evaporating so we have this big uh, thing down below here 
and it's pretty cool. Uh, you can see the, the ceiling is natural, so that's kind of just carving out some of the, the vaulted ceilings into the, the sandstone rock. Um, but then like they have added some pillars and tried to decorate it a little bit. And then we even have the dragon here. This would be like a drainage pipe coming down from the yard itself and then kind of spewing out of the dragon smart into the lit pond here. But then of course all the water from this area would just accumulate in here. Uh, later, probably the next episode, uh, I'm going to add like an escape tunnel here. Um, so you can go through here and then get out of the castle if you have to. Since this is like the lowest point, it's going to be like a small uh, tunnel. Uh, and this is also connected to uh, the wine cellar here. So the inner part of the wine cellar is connect going to be connected to this escape uh, tunnel. And then I think it's about time we check out the final piece of the castle here. Which of course is the tallest tower and the adjacent buildings for that. So the tower itself is quite tall. I have these flying buttresses. I don't know, just to kind of add some uh, elements of fantasy into this place, some gothic features. And I think it, it breaks up the building a little bit. Uh, you might not like them, but I think it works. Uh, but yeah, it's a little weird, but <laughs> it kind of just it creates a unique kind of style here. So bear with me, guys. And then we have this section in the front here, which is kind of just... Yeah, rooms, uh, it's uh, yeah, housing the kitchen, uh, but also smaller stuff. But it's kind of having this plateau up here uh, to look cool. Um, and yeah, then this is like the, the tower. This is where the Lord's Chamber is and all that sort of stuff. So the way to get to this place is uh, from here. You're at the, the upper level or the second level of the yard. There's a door straight ahead and this takes you into this place here. We have a, yeah, a lounge or lobby or something here. To the left, we have the tea room. So this is a place you just relax, have a cup of tea or a cup of wine or something, and then just chat, discuss stuff. It's a room for Toth or uh, for uh, the great uh, talks. So that's kind of the idea for this one. And then to the right, we get into the kitchen of the castle. So it's a pretty big kitchen here. We have a big oven, uh, we have the grill, the barbecue on the side, and then the oven here. Uh, and then, yeah, plenty of places to prepare the food. Then up here we have uh, a tub to to wash the dishes in and all the tools. And then you can stay here, look out while you do the dishes. Not too bad. Uh, and then this is then again connected to the staircase I showed you earlier, bringing us down to the basements. Uh, Straight ahead here, we have a small pantry as well, just adjacent to the kitchen. This is like the stuff that you would need frequently. And then the bigger pantry down below is for like long-term storage. Anyway, uh, we got back here, out to the plateau here. And then there's a staircase, takes us up to a fantastic looking hallway. Look at all these colors. I think it's cool. Uh, and this um, takes us to a staircase, which takes us up. It takes us out to this little area, uh, which again is where we entered the, um, the servants building. This little garden here with a tree and just some remarkable views over here. Uh, and then on the opposite side, we get to uh, this little uh, yeah plateau here. Uh, you can sit here uh, in the sun and stuff and just enjoy the views. And there's a little garden here as well. We have a palm tree and yeah, just a pretty area in my opinion. And I love the way that you can look down here at the different levels, just kind of opening it up, creating some sense of space in here. Then we move up the staircase like this and we get to the master bedroom. So we have a massive bed for the Lord himself, uh, some well decorated walls. Uh, we have a picture here of uh, one of the the lords of this family here and yeah that's about it if we continue around here we have a door taking us out to a balcony to the balcony here just kind of uh, looking over the yard here a nice place to have your morning coffee i think and then we can continue up and around we get to like the utility room of the master bedroom we have a bathtub we have some storage here we have a little oven to heat up the bath water and all that sort of stuff 
And then from here we get all the way up and this is kind of like the dungeon. So we get up here, there's some storage and stuff, but this can kind of takes us out to the, um, the upper defensive part of the castle. This is where we have, of course, the garden because it's Starvasa, but uh, apart from that we have uh, battlements. Um, so you could stay up here and defend the castle pretty well as well. So that's nice. Um, and then there's a little ladder taking us all the way up to this place. And this, yeah, I did guess this would be considered the Don John. There's even a place here we could write notes and uh, yeah, just kind of a small little area up here. And that, my friends, is Darvasa Castle in all its glory. I really do hope that you enjoy it. I had a fantastic time building this. I'm, I've been super excited to show you as well. And I really do hope that you guys just enjoy it as much as I did, or at least almost as much. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Really hope that you enjoyed. If so, make sure to smack that like button. And if you haven't done it already, make sure to subscribe. It's been Vigoman, and I'm out. <laughs>